imagine that you are an eternal being who is living in deep empty space there are no galaxies no stars absolutely nothing around you then tell me would you be able to say that you are at absolute rest or in absolute motion let's try that you said since there is nothing around me to compare i will say that i am at absolute rest i am a point glued to empty space which is at absolute rest then you turned on a flash light and measured the speed of light coming out of it and you got a value let us say c after that you threw the flash light and waited till it reached a constant velocity v then with full confidence you said that the torch is moving with a absolute velocity v and if i measure the velocity of light now i will get v plus c you did the experiment and got c not v plus c now you are in complete dilemma because now you cannot prove that the torch is moving with the absolute velocity v now let us say that when you threw the torch there is a image of you moving with the torch now for him he is at absolute rest and you are moving with the velocity v in the backward direction if he also measures the velocity of light he will also get c for him he is at absolute rest and you are moving with the velocity v for you you are at absolute rest and he is moving with the velocity v and you also cannot prove the absolute motion of the torch no matter how much you try you can never prove that you are at absolute rest or in absolute motion and this is the birth of relativity there are two conclusions conclusion number 1 All the laws of physics have identical form in all inertial frames. Inertial word here means that the frame of reference is in a uniform relative motion or rest. In other words, a known accelerated frame of reference. Some people also depict inertial frames as the frames in which the Newton laws are valid. This conclusion simply says that there is no physical experiment that can prove absolute rest or absolute motion. Also, we call it the special theory of relativity. The thing special about this theory is that we deal with inertial frame of references. There is also something called the general theory of relativity. In that, we also deal with known inertial frames of references. That is the general version of this theory. Now, the second and a very important conclusion is that the speed of light in vacuum is constant in all inertial frames. Now it's genuine to ask what is so special about the velocity of light the thing special about the velocity of light is that this is in itself a physical principle the velocity is the result of electric field and magnetic field complementing each other in empty space and this velocity will not change with the motion of your frame this is a constant value this should always be same irrespective of the velocity of the observer who is observing it c will always be equal to 1 upon under root of mu not epsilon not where mu not is the permeability of free space and epsilon not is the permittivity of free space keep in mind that we are talking about free space that means vacuum so for keeping this c constant for different inertial observers the time dilates and the length contracts hence relativity is there because there is no absolute time no absolute length everything is relative and in the upcoming episode of math genius we will pop out this time dilation and length contraction just by saying that the velocity of light is constant in every inertial frame so i hope you have understood the reason for relativity so thanks for watching this episode and see you in the next episode of math genius